What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. On today's episode, we'll be talking about reports that, that the Blazers are going to be targeting Zach Levine and Bradley Bill. Not touching on it long. You guys know I'm really over kind of the Zach Levine rumors, but we'll get into that. I also have a follow-up on my video from yesterday when I spoke about uh, the, the, the chance of the Bulls being interested in Rudy Gobert. We'll also be continuing our draft player profiles, this time on Malik Bannum. And we'll get into all that and more on today's Chicago Bulls Central. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. Welcome to another episode. I'm your host, Hayes. You already know what it is. So first off, I do want to follow up my video yesterday in which I talked about Rudy Gobert because there was something that I did miss in that video talking about. And that was, if the Bulls were to trade for Rudy Gobert, what that deal would potentially look like, right? And this is why I did talk about the financial part of it. And I did talk about the fact that, you know, I would rather target out of the two that were mentioned is, is Mitchell Robinson. Not necessarily saying that Mitchell Robinson is a better player, but I think it gives you a, enough of what Rudy Gobert does at a much cheaper uh, value. I mean, price, I mean, as far as a contract. Now, Rudy Gobert's contract, as many of you guys know, next season is for $38 million. So looking at the Bulls, and this is why, you know, you can't believe everything how it's presented. That rumor deal that you're seeing going around of Kobe White, Vooch, and the 18th pick is not going to be enough to get it done. That leaves the Chicago Bulls about $9 million short in regards to matching Rudy Gobert's contract. Um, again, uh, uh, Kobe White's contract, $7.4 million. Uh, Nikola Vucevic's contract next season is $22 million. So that gets you at a, about, about a little over $29 million, but that does not get you close enough. You have to match salaries, when you, especially salaries that big. Now, you don't have to match them exact. There is a bit of a wiggle room. I can't remember the exact percentage. I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments on that. But that, that difference, it only leaves you two players that you can throw into the deal because out of the Bulls, Guaranteed contracts next season. We have Marco Simonovic at one million, Javante Green at one million, uh, well, almost two million, Kobe White at seven point four, Patrick Williams at seven point seven, and Alex Caruso at nine million dollars. We also have player options of Tony Bradley at two million dollars. So that being said, it doesn't get you close, right? It, so you you would have to literally, unless you're throwing in and making a big trade and throwing in a Demar Derozan. Um, in in regards to that, and the Bulls won't be doing that. Nikola Vucevic and Kobe White. Get you close to there, but not quite co close enough. So the only other player that would actually fit that is either Alex Caruso or Patrick Williams. So again, this is this is why looking at the actual actual deals that are presented are important because I'll tell you what that makes it even me even less uh, likely. And and you know even this this trade, like I said, it was presented as I, I heard from a guy who heard from a guy type thing. It's not it's not any real reporting as far as the fact of saying that the Bulls are seriously going after just saying that the Bull they, that he or the Bulls may be interested but if you look at ha having to give up Vooch Kobe White the 18th pick and Alex Caruso for again when there are players out on the market that get you close to what Rudy Gobert can give you on the on the blocking in rebounding in again not as versatile defenders let's be clear here Mitchell Robinson I think can switch up to probably the two in the league but uh not as versatile defenders but they get you kind of close without giving up that many assets. Again, that still may not be a deal breaker for a lot of you guys, especially considering we have Io DeSumo on the roster. Some of you may look at it saying, hey, Alex Caruso, that's the price of doing business. But let me know down below. I just wanted to add that little bit of clarity onto that possible deal that I did not add on the video from last night. This is why. This is why I don't usually record my videos late at night, because guess what? I miss shit. Now, with that being said, when it got get also into this reported interest that the Blazers may have in Zach Levine, I've already covered this very heavily. For, for the Blazers to uh, to sign Zach Levine, they would have to renounce Nurkic and Anthony Simmons or work them into a sign and trade with the Chicago Bulls, which we'll see. Um, but again, as I've said before, it's going to be the offseason of Zach, Le Zach the summer of Zach Levine trade rumors. Don't believe all of them. This is a lot, especially when you don't have any anything concrete. It's really, it honestly is just all speculation. Now, we're getting closer to that June 30th date. June 30th at 6 p.m. is when everybody's contracts end. That's when people officially become free agents. And I believe they can start technically taking meetings at that point. And deals can start being announced, I believe, on July 1st. No, because there's a memoratorium period or whatever. Um, I think deals can start being announced July 5th or 6th or something like that. Um, but we're coming up close to the start of free agency. 
after the draft. It's a week later after that. Free agency is getting, getting rolling, and we'll really know what this Bulls team is going to look like by the end of July for the most part. Maybe even knowing how AK and Eversley move, once the Zach Levine domino falls, AK and Eversley are going to get to work and we will know exactly what's going on with the Chicago Bulls team. Again, looking at their cap outlook, once Zach Levine signs or even before then, the Bulls don't have a lot of, they don't have any cap space. Now, if Zach Levine were to sign with another team or his rights, his rights were renounced, his bird rights, which they're not going to renounce those rights. Um, we would it would free up cap space. I think at that point we'd be six, sitting at about $16 million in cap space. But even if the Bulls renounce every other player, that's Derrick Jones Jr. who has a $12 million cap hold, Matt Thomas who has a $2 million uh, cap hold, uh, Tyler Cook, things like that. It's not going to free up true cap space for the Chicago Bulls. Really, when it boils down to it, unless Zach Levine does leave, the Bulls are only going to have their 10.3 um, uh, uh, mid-level exception to give and the $5 million trade player exception on top of of uh, veteran minimum deals. Now, they don't have their buy. They could have had another weapon in the $4 million biannual exception as well, but they used part of that to sign Thompson, even though they didn't use that full bi-level exception. They only signed into a $1.1 million deal. So, with that being said, that's the Bulls' uh, cap outlook. So, it's going to be an interesting offseason for the Chicago Bulls, regardless of what happens. But that is, a, just since we're talking about it, and I wanted to bring up that June uh, 30th date, I wanted to talk about, what our cap situation really looks like just briefly. And we'll get into more details on that. The same way that I cover draft draft prospects, we'll get into high level uh, free agency talk and how that works with our cap and things that can be done there right after the draft. We're jumping right into that. I'll have a, a list of free agents, uh, my tier free agents uh, coming out probably a day or so after the draft as well. So be on the lookout for that. Really what the Bulls do in the NBA draft is really going to inform the way that I personally cover free agency and how it comes up. So once that domino falls, we'll be heading into our, our uh, free agency coverage very, very heavily. Let's go ahead and get into our draft player profile for this episode. Only one prospect today. We're talking about Malachi Branham. Now, this is a 19-year-old. Well, he will. He just turned 19 this month or last month, I believe, um, a shooting guard from Ohio State. You guys know I'm in Columbus, so I know Ohio State players very well. He's 6'5", 195 pounds with an almost 7-foot wingspan. It fluctuates. I've read that it was 6'10", 6'11". Either way, it's it's near um, a seven-foot wingspan. A comp, good comp for him that I've read is Chris Middleton, which is a great comp. Now, this is one of the guys, admittedly, he's probably going to be outside of the Bulls range. What I'm doing in this, this is really my last week of draft player profiles, and what I'm doing with this is that because there are some players, there's always one player that falls, right? There's always a player that is expected to go in the lottery that kind of falls some, especially if players jump up. We're hearing players like Blake Wesley, who I did cover, may go from being expected to be a twenty, a pick in the 20s to maybe being a top 10 pick in this NBA draft because of the way that the workouts and combine is gone. When you have things like that, you have a player that's expected to be drafted high that falls. And uh, uh, Malachi, while not expected to be super high in that lottery, was expected to be around most mocks had him between that 14th and 16th area. If a player moves up from the 20s, we can see Malachi Branham move into the Bulls' range Possibly. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm bringing him up and I did want to talk about him because he's a very intriguing prospect on both sides of the ball. Some of the positives for him. He's a three level scorer. Again, he can put the ball on the floor. He, he's very physical and getting to the lane. He's a great cutter. He's a good. He's an excellent mid range shooter and he can shoot the three. Now, that three ball may need some polishing off at the NBA level. But when you talk about a player who just turned 19 and will be 19 their whole rookie campaign to come in already to have that three level scoring capability. Is huge for a player. But while I'm going to talk more about his offense, the one thing that I do want to talk about is this player's defense. And why I do think, regardless if Zach Levine leaves or not, having a player or drafting a player like, like Malachi Branham could be your built-in uh, replacement long-term. Again, he's not going to come right in at all. And he may never be a 20-point-per-game scorer. Again, I look at him as, as possibly being one of those players that comes in the NBA level and because of his ability to put on the ball, he's a passer, he gets into the lane, he gets to the foul line, those things, he can probably get between 12 and 15 points right away at the NBA level. Now, again, being 19, there's so much more room for him to grow. He could very well be a 20-point-per-game, 25-point-per-game score at, in the NBA at some point. He has great court vision as well. He's an awesome rebounder for the guard position. That's one of the things that really surprised me in his tape is how good of a rebounder he is 
as in as a guard. Now we had a pretty good guard rebounder in Lonzo Ball here as well this past season, but to be able to add a player like Malachi Branham, who would be a bench player, especially if Zach Levine does resign, he would be coming off the bench again. As things that I've been saying when it comes to guards, he's he comes in and and able to give you a lot of what Kobe White already does. He brings a lot of those positives that you look at in the potential of Kobe White, but he brings the defensive pedigree that Kobe White has never had in his career. This kid's defense is is ready to go. Now, he probably will need to put on some weight, as all rookies does. That 195, as a guard, probably will be fine enough, but I can see him getting into that 200, 205 probably range and just filling out, putting on some lean muscle. Thing, thing about him, not only does he have the ability to score, but he also can initiate the offense. He's a player that you can come in, and that, and especially if you look at him, if the Bulls do draft him, coming off that bench, who can initiate some offense, who can uh, play off Alice Caruso, Ayo DeSumo. Again, with this link, I can absolutely see as well Billy Donovan playing him some at the three, but that remains to be seen. He probably, like I said, more than likely won't be there for the Chicago Bulls, but looking at all his positives, they're huge. Now, let's get into some, some of the negatives. Shooting off the dribble can be a bit of an issue for Malachi Kai Branham. Um, again, not something that I would say is a huge negative to where it's like, oh, he can never score off the dribble. No, it's just that shooting off the dribble doesn't always work the best for him. Also, sometimes he settles for difficult mid-range shots. Now, he is, as I said, an excellent mid-range uh, shooter, and that probably plays into that. He trusts his ability to make the shot, but sometimes he can settle for very difficult shots, and that 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 hurts can hurt the offense very much on an NBA level as well and does that frustrate the coach as being a rookie coming in him him taking difficult shots does how how do, how, do, how does the coaching staff develop that part out of him uh sometimes on defense while he is a very good on ball defender coming off screens can be a bit of a difficult he he sh he struggles recovering from screens very uh sometimes very well and on a team that had some of the worst pick and roll defense in the league that could be a bit of a concern, but we'll see with that again. Something that absolutely could be worked out of his game because he's only coming in at 19 years old again. So there you go. Uh, free throw shooting can absolutely be a bit of an issue for him. Now, is it a huge issue? No. Not, I wouldn't say that by any stretch of the imagination, but it is something that you, that you would definitely want to look at, especially as a coaching staff bringing him in and try to work that uh, and, and figure that part out of his game because that can help make him a much more of a complete uh, player on the NBA level. Overall, I'm very high on this guy as the NBA is. That's why he's not he's not projected to be in the Bulls range. But again, as we know, AK and Eversley, if they see this as their guy, they very well could move up in the draft. He could also fall in the draft. It could be a combination of the two. He could fall a little bit and AK and Eversley pull the trigger and make that move. But Malachi Branham is a player that I think if the Bulls were to draft, if they were to get A, it would be a steal, it would be lucky, but he instantly make, improves the Bulls scoring issues off the bench. Again, I'm not saying he can come in and right away in his first season be a 20-point-per-game scorer off the bench, but I can see in his rookie year him being a 12 to 15-point-per-game scorer off the bench, depending on how else they work that bench, and we know they're going to improve that bench some, but within the flow of the game, within the way that the Bulls also play, I see him as being a player that can come into the game Keep that scoring pressure up some, which we did have issues with. We we're one of the lowest teams in the league in bench scoring. You guys know I I beat that drum very much a lot in the season. There's been no team to make a significant run with bench scoring ranked as low as the Bulls bench scoring was for the most part of that season. Malachi Branham definitely would help that right away on the NBA level. Again, a player that's probably not going to be in the Bulls range realistically, but if some things do fall, some things change in the draft, some maneuverings made, it's possible that he could be a Chicago Bull in this NBA draft. Let me know what you guys think about Malachi Branham. If you watch him in college, what do you think about this review on him? Has that changed? Would you like to see him as a player on the Chicago Bulls? Again, this week is going to be a lot of players that may be slightly outside of the Bulls range or some players that the Bulls may need, may be a reach for them to take. We'll go over all that this week. We're going to continue our draft player coverage. I want to hear from you guys on all of this. Let me know what you think down below. Make sure you're also following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and or voicemail, you can do so at 773-270-2799. Like I liked in every episode on. Go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Breaks, Breaks Media. Media. Media.